Australia is being urged to pursue more than a two-state solution to the ongoing Israel-Hamas war. Now the left are calling for sanctions against Israel to punish them for what's happening in Gaza. Mark Purcell of the uh, Australian Council for International Development writes in the Sydney Morning Herald, Penny Wong's recent speech at the ANU Securing Our Future conference noted a toughened stance from the Australian government. While a welcome step, we need more than stern words. The bid to eliminate Hamas does not give Israel a license to violate human rights and operate outside international law. Sanctions, however, are a legitimate and proven non-violent means of exerting diplomatic influence over a crisis. Anything less than this from the Australian government will show Israel that it can continue acting with impunity. Joining me now is Arab-Israeli journalist Yosef Haddad. Yosef, there is a definite anti-Israel, anti-Zionist sentiment in leftist parties in the West, uh, in the UK, the US, right here in Australia. How does Israel handle its uh, allies being increasingly critical of its conduct? Well, first of all, we need to discuss, uh, Rita, the two main groups. First, it's the extreme left and also the extremist anti-Israeli terror supporters. The majority of them come as immigrants from dictatorship countries ruled by dictator who its regime raped their women, killed their families, and also prevented them from having freedom of speech and freedom of uh, religion. And then they ran and fled to the West. And instead of endorsing the democracy and prosper from it, they abuse it. And now once they start abusing it, then the extreme left, they adopt them. And then when you put them together, you get exactly what I hear from the uh, People uh, or politicians in Australia, in uh, the UK, in the United States, such as the squad. And this is absolutely unbelievable. Israel is committing war crimes. Israel is actually doing absolutely everything to prevent war crimes. While Hamas, a terrorist organization, Rita, it's a terrorist organization that killed Arabs and Jews, kidnapped Arabs and Jews, raped our women beheaded our babies, burned entire families alive, and they are focusing on the only democracy in the Middle East, the only army that actually doing absolutely everything to prevent all those atrocities and all those war crimes, and they're attacking us. Listen to me, they are ignorant. They have no idea what they're talking about. And if they come and visit Israel, I'm telling you, they will absolutely change their mind because otherwise this is unprecedented. I did not hear something about that and I cannot accept it. And I will fight with all my might to, 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 to show the truth and the reality about us. This is unbelievable, Rita. Now, the American House of Representatives has passed a resolution condemning the rally cry from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. They've said that is anti-Semitic. But, Yosef, that's not going to stop the activists from chanting it at rallies. Indeed, the chants are becoming ever more violent. Pro-Palestinian protests are intensifying across North America. We saw in Michigan chants of death to America, death to Israel on the streets. New York, they're burning the American flag, they're burning the Israeli flag. Uh, Hamas leader Sinwa is being praised by lefties in Canada. There's chants of, we are his men. Um, as an Arab Israeli, what do you say to these protesters? Well, uh, it's again, uh, you split it to two, the radical left and the extremist terror supporters that comes from the Middle East and comes from Afghanistan and Pakistan, and they join together. No, they're not going to stop uh, chanting from the river to the sea. In fact, uh, Rita, right now I'm in uh, New York, and tomorrow I'm going to speak at uh, Columbia University. Today at Columbia University, there was a massive uh, protest a uh, pro-Palestinian anti-Israeli protest where they chanted from the river to the sea, and also they chanted Intifada, Intifada, Revolution, Intifada. What is the mm -hmm. meaning of Intifada? 
the direct translation of Intifada is violent uprising. But let me explain on the ground what is meaning Intifada. The meaning of Intifada is the death of more Israelis, both Arabs and Jews, and also the death of more Palestinians, because that's what Intifada is. Now, why a white Australian or white European or white American or those immigrants who live in a democracy care about the Palestinians or the Israelis. They will chant this, and after two hours, they will go to the pub, drink their beer, enjoy their freedom, and enjoy their democracy, while the Gazans in Palestine are suffering uh, from the terrorist organization Hamas, while the Jews and the Arabs in Israel are suffering from Hamas, from the terrorist organization Hamas, and also from Iran, the head of the snake that we need to cut. So for them, they're going to keep chanting that, but the suffer is us. This is uh, the disattachment from uh, reality. And this is why we need to fight it. We don't have any other choice, Rita. Well, you would have seen that there were even uh, cheers for Iran's attack against Israel. Uh, the same people who were a second ago chanting for a ceasefire were suddenly happy that Iran was raining down missiles and suicide drones on Israel. Uh, do you get the feeling it's not actually peace that some of these activists are advocating for? Oh, uh, look, uh, it's obvious that those uh, activists, I, I, I don't even call them activists, they, they have a, a very obvious name. They are terror supporters. Some of them are actually terrorists. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I started saying, uh, if Israel fails, then the West is next. Uh, actually, the West is now, and uh, further than that, in, in, in Australia, we see just a couple of days ago attack on a pastor uh, who was stabbed in the face. Uh, these things that we're seeing more and more in the West, that see, we're seeing more and more in democracies around the world, uh, those, act, uh, those terror supporters will not stop. Now, here is the biggest problem. I'm seeing something very, very troubling me. And the, 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 the governments, and, uh, you know, we talked about the fact that they passed a resolution uh, to uh, uh, adopt the fact that they need to stop the chant from the river to the sea, they're not going to stop doing it because no one is enforcing the law. And the more they're not doing it, uh, they think that by not enforcing the law, it will uh, maybe calm them down. Let me be very clear. They are coming with the mentality of the Middle East. What does that mean? Very simple. If you do not act with strengths against terrorism and their supporters, they will see it as weakness. And the more weak you are, mm -hmm. the more they're going to attack more and more and push more and more. So the only solution to it is to cut it from now. And if you don't do it now, you're going to get this more and more and more. That's why I am begging everybody to understand that our fight now with Hamas and Hezbollah and, of course, the head of the snake, Iran, is something that we are holding the West. And if we don't wake up, very soon you will see how it will impact. And, in fact, it's starting to impact the, the whole world. We have to understand that we need to destroy Hamas. We need to destroy Hezbollah. And we must destroy the Iranian regime, the Islamic Iranian regime, because our problems are not with the Iranian people. The Iranian people and the Israeli people love each other. It is the regime we have a problem with. Yes, right. Yosef Haddad, you're right there. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Thank you for having me, Rita.